Hello my friends all over the world, wherever you are. William Poloniak here again at Whole Health Foundation in beautiful March of 2016. And today I'm going to make a juice, but it's going to be dictated by what's ripe in my garden. So let's go to my garden and take a look at what I'm putting into this juice. As you can see, the red Swiss chard is abundant in the garden and so are the beets that I grew about 45 to 60 days ago. In addition to that, I'm going to be juicing the broccoli crowns that I've already harvested from these broccoli plants. And you'll see there's still a few crowns here, but they're not big enough to harvest. In addition to the red Swiss chard and the beets, I'm going to add some collard green leaves, maybe about half a dozen or so. Here's a closer look at my ingredients. Of course I have carrots, I have one and a half heads of garlic, ginger, about 160 grams of turmeric, the broccoli heads that I harvested. I picked three beets and look at the size of that one and it's only about a month and a half old. Collard greens and a huge bunch of red Swiss chard. So let's make some juice and I'll start with my greens. Now with this batch of juice I'm going to use the five blade cutter that has had the sharp teeth cut into it, the five blade near zero blowback cutter. And the first thing I'm going to do is plug in my thermometer. and feed in three ice cubes to cool down the cutter. And we'll start with, let's start with the broccoli florets. Now I want to point out I'm using the front loading feed tube that almost 100% minimizes blowback. And the reason for that is if there's blowback, it shoots up and it bounces off the angle, which eliminates almost 100% of the kinetic energy. So let's continue. Put a little bit of turmeric in now. with my broccoli so next I'm going to put the beets in with the tops but this beet is too big so what I'm going to do is cut the top off beat in the tops first and because this beet is too big I'm going to trim off any dirt at the base here cut it in quarters and then feed it into the feed tube such a good job, you're going to be tempted to put in more produce than you should, but don't do that. Cut back, put two or three leaves at a time in. Remember, less produce is more effective. Now that I've done all my greens, I'll continue with carrots. the last of my carrots. And again, one of the beauties of this front loading feed tube, as you can see in here, and I see that there's still a plug of carrots, so I'm going to put some pulp in here and force that last plug through. The next step, as usual, is to mix the green pulp with the carrot pulp. Let's make some juice. 
Now we're going to begin making juice. I've already put some pulp into two of these claws. We're going to press two claws at once. Now this is very important to center it left to right, center it front to back, all the way back, back it off a little bit because we don't want this to go up too fast. And while that's pressing juice, I'm going to fold more claws with three scoops of pulp. Flat mat, fold it into as tight a package as we can. Set that aside. Now, you'll notice how the juice is puddling in the collection a folded container and also in the collection bowl and I'm going to show you two different methods that I call the less work six watt method. This goes forward, this goes over, the spent cloths go on top, two more cloths go inside, again centered left to right, centered front to back, all the way back, back it off. Because there's a lot of juice in here I'm going to hold the cloths very carefully with my left hand and pour this very, very slowly. And I've mentioned this before, but the first time I did this, I got it all over my countertop because I was in too much of a hurry. So there are two methods for the less work six cloth method. One method is you take this dry pulp and crush it and put it in the puddle in the collection bowl. And again, because my bowl has a lot of liquid, Another method would be to put new pulp on top of the old pulp, but because I have a lot of liquid in there, I'm going to crush this up, put it in the puddle of juice, and then we'll put three more scoops here. Now, because I'm still getting some puddling in here, I'm going to take this cloth, crush it up, put it in the puddle of juice, to absorb that juice and we'll fill this with three more scoops of pulp. And that's it all the way. Again, watch my folding technique. With my fingers, I'm going to pull this back flap under the front flap. Make as tight a package as possible. This goes forward, that goes over, and because the bowl is full, I'm going to put it into bottles. So let's put it into bottles. And notice I'm leaving about 10% for filtered or distilled water. Here we go. So three scoops. Nice tight package. And notice how we're puddling in here again. We're going to have to pour that into the container again. Now this time, I'm going to put two scoops on top of the spent pulp, but first I'm going to mix this pulp, the dry pulp, with the wet pulp. And watch again, I'm going to fold this flap under into a tight package. This is going to minimize slippage. And this goes forward, that goes over. The spent claws go on top. And center left to right, center front to back, all the way back, back it off a little bit. And very, very carefully, we'll pour this into the collection bowl. Now again, I'm pulling this forward so this does not touch the counter. And we'll put three scoops on, well two scoops now that we're leaving the spent patty in here. Three scoops would be too thick. And later we'll put only one scoop because the patty is getting thicker and thicker. This goes forward, that goes over. And you notice my bowl is very, very full, so what I'm going to do, put the spent claws here. I'm going to set the tray back, but not just a little bit. You want it to be so obvious that you're not going to make the mistake of pressing it when it's back and ruining your tray. So all the way back and let's fill more bottles. Now many people have asked me, why do I fill the bottle only 90% and add water? Well, for me the juice is too concentrated. And especially for a diabetic, you want less sugars from the carrots and the beets. Later I'm going to show you how you can get 10% more juice using the Whole Health Foundation Premium Model Juicer. 
that's out all the way. Centered left to right, centered front to back, adjust it all the way back, back it up. Now the spent pulp I'm going to form into a tight ball and press again. So I want to show you how much more juice we can get because of this solid bottom plate on the bottom of the um, Whole Health Foundation model juicer. And I want to remind you that any Norwalk juicer can be upgraded and you can install the premium bottom base plate on any Norwalk juicer. It doesn't have to be a whole health foundation model. It can be a Norwalk model. Just buy the parts from me and upgrade your own juicer. Now I'm folding it under to minimize slippage. Turn it upside down, flatten it. Advance that all the way. Now as you can see I've repackaged all of the spent pulp into three double packets. And what I'm going to do is use a measuring beaker to measure how much extra juice we can get using a Whole Health Foundation premium model juicer. So we'll push these into the center, make sure the tray's on securely, centered left to right, centered front to back, all the way back. And this time I'm going to watch for traction and then back it off a little bit. Well, we have six ounces so far, so we'll put our last cloth in here. Well, it's a tight fit. We'll get it in there. Centered left to right, centered front to back, all the way back. When I get juice flow, I'm going to back it off. There we go. Back it off a little bit. So far we've got about 19 ounces of juice and the container is full, so I'm not going to continue with this or press more. I could probably get another two ounces if I continued. So what I'll do now is I'll pour this into my collection container and fill more bottles. Now I'm topping off all of my bottles with distilled water. And the key for long shelf life is to fill the bottles until you have a convex curve. Now you'll see how I'm pouring enough water until it just overflows so that you have a convex curve on the top like I have here. So the next step will be to cap it off and put it in the fridge. Well, my friends, as you can see, I have 5, 10, 15 bottles of juice and enough for a taste test. And remember that one and a half of these bottles was from pressing the spent pulp using the Whole Health Foundation Premium Model Juicer that normally gives you over 10% more juice. So let's do a taste test. Well, my friends, here we have today's juice that's mostly red Swiss chard. Uh, collard greens and three large beets and carrots of course so let's give it a taste test oh it tastes pretty good a little more bitter than I would like but to sweeten it up next time I'll put in some French sorrel well I hope you like what you've seen if you do please tell a friend and if you'd like to call me my phone number is 760 seven five three zero three two one my email address is developtrust at cox.net and my webpage is wholehealthfound.com see you in the next video